Okay, so I know I'm horribly late to this party, but I've just finished Succession and I'm still in awe. Apart from being just an incredible show, the costume design is absolutely stunning. To some people, it may look plain and basic, but that's the whole point. There's very much a if you know, you know theme going on, which plays into the incredibly rich lifestyle these characters lead, far beyond most of us could ever hope for. In the fashion community, this style is affectionately referred to as the old money aesthetic or quiet luxury style. I think there are some distinctions between the two though. I believe old money is more of an attitude passed down through generations of families that have long histories of wealth. And along with this does come a certain way of dressing in a classy style without logos that was perhaps drilled into them from a young age. This is a complete guess, but I imagine this could relate to old money families having ties to royalty or government, and with that comes a certain formality of dressing. Whilst quiet luxury or stealth wealth could be anyone today who's willing to spend a little bit more money, the point is, is that their style is not flashy or gaudy. There's a perfect example of this in Succession, when Tom berates someone for wearing a Burberry bag because of its loud design. Also an interesting point, there's lots of good videos showing how perceived luxury brands such as Burberry or Gucci aren't actually worn that much by rich people, they're mostly worn by upper middle class. Of course you do need a lot of money to dress in the quiet luxury style so that's probably why it's often linked with old money. In actuality the characters of Succession are probably a mixture of the two. So in today's video I just want to talk through some of my favourite looks which perfectly portray this old money or quiet luxury style. Plus, I'll be talking about a few outfits that actually go against this in the show and my thoughts as to why. Just before we begin, there's an Instagram account called Succession Fashion who have done a lot of the legwork in identifying these pieces. So I'll leave a link down to their page in the description. Plus, I'll actually leave links to all the pieces I'm talking about in case you have a little bit of spare change you're looking to spend. So one of the things that caught me by surprise when I started watching this is how many of them wear baseball caps. Throughout the entire series, you see them wearing caps both casually and formally in their office. Probably the most famous one is Kendall's. We see him wearing a navy baseball cap quite a lot. It's from Loro Piana, who are an Italian brand and claim to be the largest cashmere manufacturer in the world. They've been around since 1924, but are now owned by LVMH, who also own the likes of Louis Vuitton, Tiffany, Dior, and many more which is no surprise. The actual cap Kendall was wearing doesn't seem to be available anymore, but it apparently cost $625. It was completely logoless and only really identifiable by the chunky Velcro backstrap. Many people think it's the Cashmere Storm System cap, but I disagree. The backstrap is completely different and Kendall's doesn't have that woolen look. I think the closest they have available now is called the My Baseball cap. It's 100% cotton in a peak dyed fabric and costs £310. It's not even made in Italy as far as I can tell, which is pretty crazy. And sorry, I might be switching between pounds and dollars quite a lot. As I said, some of these pieces are no longer available, so I'll be using historic prices from places like this Instagram account. Laura Piana is actually a bit of a running theme for Kendall. We see him wearing their pieces a lot through the show. Like this baby cashmere polo for £1,140, which is apparently crafted using an exclusive technique to achieve supremely lightweight. So I guess it makes you feel like you're getting even less for your money. This classic crew neck is also from them and costs £3,790 and is made from Vichunia, which is apparently the rarest animal fiber in the world. And one of my favorites, the Savile Cashmere Blend Overcoat for a mere $8,895, which he likes to wear quite a lot with the collar popped up. Although the price is obviously eye-watering, this one does actually look like a super quality and robust piece. Of course, we can't really talk about succession without mentioning suits. Ewan Roy's plaid blazer from Italian brand Xenia was one of my particular favourites. 
yours for just $3,690. Tom's Ralph Lauren Purple Label Gregory Silk Linen Suit Jacket for $2,995, which is just perfectly named because as we all know, you can't make a tomlet without breaking some Greg's. Shiv's Ralph Lauren Preston Houndstooth Wool Jacket for $2,490 was a great look, along with the Ralph Lauren Cashmere Turtleneck for $1,090. And no surprise, Kendall goes full Loro Piana with his suits, wearing the Madrid Sartioral Jacket, $2,950, the Andre shirt, $545, City 2 Prince's pants, $995, and the Summer Walk moccasin, $825. There's also plenty of what these characters would call casual wear, but what us normal people would only wear once or twice a year and then tuck it away so it doesn't get ruined. When they're out on a work retreat, Tom wears the Brunello Cuccinelli Cashmere Knit Down Vest, coming in at $2,995, plus his Todd's 1T sneakers at $795, which look a hell of a lot like the New Balance 327s. I wonder which ones came first. One of Roman's rare casual looks is this Ralph Lauren Shawl Lapel Ribbed Trim Cardigan for $598, which I believe is similar to something his dad wears, which isn't a surprise given their relationship. And one of my favorite casual looks from the series is this. Kendall when he's going out on a walk and rocking this $970 corduroy jacket from Tom Ford, plus the Dries Van Noten wedge sneakers at a very reasonable $335. The funny thing is, you could argue that many of these pieces don't look that different from what you can find in Zara or H&M. But this relates back to that attitude of old money. Even if two things look identical, they're going to choose the expensive one from a brand that has heritage and quality rather than a mass-produced, cheaper version. The next few items I'm going to talk about are kind of spoilery because they relate to the storyline, so if that bothers you, you may want to switch off now. I want to talk about how these characters start to drift due to the events going on around them, and how this is clearly reflected in their style. Kendall is one of the most complex characters, and we see two instances of him straying away from his normal self. Early on in the series, when he's trying to work with a startup company, Instead of being his normal self, he changes the way he dresses in a desperate attempt to try and impress them. It's still not a cheap endeavor though, as he goes with the $625 Enfance Rich Supreme Bathhouse Orgy t-shirt and these Lanvin sneakers, which I couldn't find the name of. If anyone knows, drop it in the comments, please. By the way, feel free to berate me for my awful pronunciation of all of these brands. Although Kendall is not old, his behavior has a very old people trying to impress young people vibe. It's pretty cringy. And later on, when he becomes estranged from his family, we see him start to wear louder and louder pieces, presumably for attention. Some of the more memorable outfits are this Gucci reversible acetate jacket in green, which was $2,900, the Prada Geometric Print Silk Top, $1,390, and the Gucci Ultra Space Sneakers, $790. Also, this Gucci UFO Embroidered Bomber Jacket, $6,900, and Flash Trek Sneakers, $975. Don't get me wrong, these pieces aren't bad looking whatsoever, and they're certainly not cheap. But it's just interesting to see how someone's mindset can affect their style. He seemed to start going for this new money look, which is something that's very evident with the character Lucas. Lucas is clearly an amalgamation of all the tech billionaires we see today. He's made his fortune very recently, hence new money, and has no respect or care for the old money attitude or traditions. This results in a much more flamboyant style. He's quite happy to show off his wealth and wear flashy things whenever he wants. A great example of this is when he wears the Needles metallic velvet bomber jacket, which I believe was around 600 pounds. He's at a party full of politicians and he needs their favor to purchase Waystar, but he doesn't care about dressing smart for them. It's that sort of whatever attitude. He's just so rich, he doesn't really care if they agree with him or not. This don't care attitude is also hilariously portrayed when he exits his private jet, 
or PJ as Roman would say. Lucas is wearing no shoes and a pair of $95 Adidas Velo track pants. Being Swedish, we see him repping a lot of Scandinavian brands as well, which I thought was a nice touch. The Fjallraven Vardag Anorak, $200, and the Vida Pro Light trousers, $155, as well as the Tiger of Sweden Dominic hoodie, which is $150, Fjallraven Keb trousers, $235, and Hagloff's Proof Low Boots, £130. These aren't particularly expensive pieces, and you get the feeling that he's just so rich, he's bored of clothes, and he's just wearing things for practicality at this point. Now, before I wrap up, there are two honorable mentions that I couldn't resist but to talk about. Firstly, Greg wearing the plaid Uniqlo shirt. I love to see affordable pieces styled in an environment full of expensive luxury. And it's a reflection of his character. He's the only one who isn't outrageously rich, at least not at the beginning. The other one is just hilarious and it's Roman wearing a $13 children's Walmart t-shirt. But if you've seen the show, you know why. It all relates back to the character's mindset. At this point in the show, he's feeling lost and vulnerable and literally runs or flies home to his mum where she looks after him. So it's very fitting for him to be wearing a child's t-shirt with no care for luxury or status. So there's my little analysis and breakdown of character outfits from Succession. As I said, I know I'm late, but I think the show, just like the clothing, is completely timeless. And if you haven't watched it yet, I highly encourage you do so. But